Sup everyone, Zynobine here, and this is Zyne's Guide to Halo 4 on Legendary. This is the level 4 runner. Alright, you're going to want to go ahead and pick up an auto sentry on the right before you run out here. Trust me, it will be pretty much the <laughs> one reliable source of damage you'll get outside of the uh, the light rifle. Alright, so up ahead, we'll be running into the base level Prometheans. These are the Crawlers. Standard Halo combat. Aim for the head because you really can't get away with the shooting them in the body a lot. Pop the auto sentry if you need it. Trust me, this, there's a neat thing, if you hit the button again, it actually dissipates the auto sentry and begins recharging. As you saw, it is not listed on the ability that you can do that. Alright, after that cinematic nonsense you can't skip, let's go ahead, run forward. Go ahead and uh, throw out your balls of confetti in the vain attempt that they'll deal any damage to the uh, crawlers. Pop out your water sentry around the corner. You're going to want to eliminate all the crawlers first. Next order of business, once the crawlers are taken care of, is to take care of the watcher. Now, you can go about this either way. You can either use the assault rifle to break their shields, or just five shots in the pistol will usually work. Go ahead, combo the knight, pick up the battle rifle, I mean light rifle. Halo 2 flashbacks, my apologies. <clears throat> Pick up some pulse grenades. Believe it or not, these are the only grenades in the game that are actually worth a damn. Alright, run forward. Stand here, turn around, back smack the knight. You're going to want to go ahead and deploy your auto sentry. And see if you can combo the knight. Sometimes the knight will decide that it will teleport and don't bother pursuing it. it you'll just get minced by all of the crawlers. Whenever a knight goes to throw a grenade, it's basically your one and only opening you can do to actually get free shots in on them. And also, if you've noticed, when you hit them with a pulse grenade, it will actually stun them. We will be abusing that maliciously throughout the campaign because the knights are just gigantic fucking bullet sponges. And if anyone argues to the contrary, I have 2,000 hours in Borderlands 2. I know what a bullet sponge is. Alright, more standard combat with the Prometheans. Headshot all of the crawlers. Thankfully, they are obscenely easy to skeet shoot if they jump up like that. There are plenty of light rifles over here. Alright. What you're going to want to try and do once you got most of the crawlers down is to kill the Watcher. As soon as the Watcher dies, run. Because that is a night battle wagon with Promethean vision and a scatter shot. And the scatter shot behaves like the Halo 2 shotgun. 
It's a sniper rifle when the enemies hold it. Move quickly, because I have seen this despawn. Pick up the scatter shot and keep going. If you need to res you know, resupply on ammo, feel free to for the light rifle. But you won't need to worry. Go ahead and make a left here. There are light rifles and a scatter shot. Walk into the threshold. Do not walk outside. You're going to want to deploy the auto sentry to bait the knight into deploying the watcher. If the watcher hides, there's nothing you can do about it. Just sit there and wait. Once the Watcher is down, you're going to do a uh, pretty much definitive strategy for Halo 4, which is spam the Light Rifle at range. I would jokingly say, take a shot every time that's the strategy, but uh, I don't want to be liable for all of your deaths. Resupply on ammo, and continue. Now, when it comes down to dealing with crawlers, you can use the zoom-in, but it will require you to be far more precise, because zoomed in, you deal more damage, but it only fires one shot, whereas unscoped, it fires in a burst. The light rifle's kind of like a hybrid of the battle rifle from the E3 demo for Halo 2 and the final version. If you want to be more precise, it's technically the one from the Halo 2 beta. Before you go to the second tower, I do recommend that you find as many crawlers as possible and try to kill as many as you can. It just makes the following section just a little bit easier. Resupply on ammo. Continue to the second tower. The knight will spawn in. Try and take out the knight or the watcher, depending on which one you deem is more threatening. A thing that I find can be helpful on a rare occasion is to throw a grenade to bait the watcher into doing its redirection attack, where it will grab your grenade midair and try to throw it back at you. Sometimes it works, sometimes it uh, doesn't. It's kind of just a crapshoot, but it can be handy on very rare occasions. Alright. Now we're going to go ahead and repeat the process again. We're going to go ahead and take out the Watcher and then spam shots from the Light Rifle. And if we're lucky, the Knight won't teleport. If you're unlucky then you, you might want to just use the scatter shot. If the knight teleports a second time, revert to a checkpoint, because you need that ammo for the scatter shot. Right, what we're going to do here now is throw a pulse grenade, start running. We're going to want to catch these two knights as they spawn in. And there's the random <laughs> victory teabag. There's a there's the randomness of the uh, the melee damage. As you saw, the melee attack barely did any damage to me. I don't understand how the melee in this game functions in terms of damage output. It's just that it's normally unavoidable. All right, the uh, we're gonna go ahead and spam the light rifle until this knight disintegrates. This is another battle wagon with the scatter shot, so getting within scatter shot distance is suicide. Resupply on ammo, continue up the tower. If you don't mind me injecting some commentary, 
the repetitive nature of night encounters, where it's just spamming shots with the light rifle, is not helped at all by the fact that the music in these sections kind of just drones on in an endless loop. It's a thing that you might not fully notice when playing, but subconsciously you are noticing that this is very repetitive. At least that's the way I look at it. If you're running low on ammo, you can resupply from these two crates. Sounds like the Prometheans don't want the Covenant here either. The battle net's already lighting up with reports of resistance all around the pylon. Drop high. Right, for this section, just prioritize whatever enemies you want dead first. Our main goal here is to get at least a Needler and a Carbine, if possible. If you can't get a Carbine, don't sweat it. It's just the thing that makes the next section all the more easier. Alright, we were unable to get any Carbines, but we have plenty of Needler ammo. We're going to go ahead, drop the scatter shot for the Needler. We're going to head over here, and we're going to take out the Watchers and Knight. Unfortunately, these Covenant and Prometheans are play fighting. They assign no damage to one another, so we're going to go ahead and have to intervene. Hopefully, you're not unlucky like I am, and your needler shots will go to the actual threats in the room and not to the random just crawler that's just not being a threat to anything. If you want to, you can go ahead and just juggle your light rifle and needler over to the next section. It's really not necessary. It's just that there are no light rifles up until the next bend, and I wanted to try to conserve some ammo, but unfortunately, I wasn't really able to. Right, pull out your scatter shot, kill the knight before it teleports. If you're lucky enough to get a plasma grenade for that section, a stick will work, but I wouldn't bet on it. Now we were able to get our hands on a carbine from that elite. I like using the light rifle to strip shields and then using the carbine to finish off certain targets. It's a bit superfluous. But at least it breaks up with the monotony of hearing the light rifle <laughs> firing sound for the 17th septillionth time. If you're running low on light rifle ammo, there's ammo right there. Alright, let's go ahead and sprint ahead. We're going to want to go ahead and assassinate the knight here. Grab a ghost and just boost through this section. It's not worth fighting through. If you take this path the way I'm going, you can usually get through it relatively unscathed. Permitting none of the grunts or elites throw grenades. 
but they seldom do. Now your ghost here will probably be taking a couple of hits on the way in. There's a fresh one here. Resupply on ammo. Make sure you have your light rifle out as the last weapon. We're going to boost ahead, and we're going to do the same thing we did earlier. We're going to prevent this door from closing. Rush forward. Kill this elite before he gets in the Banshee. You don't need two of these things in the air, because it will just make your life a living hell. If he gets into the Banshee, revert to a checkpoint. We're going to go ahead and try to take out as many grunts as we can from range. We're also trying to bait out the Ghost. Our goal here is to get the Elite into the Ghost and then blow up the Ghost with the Light Rifle. <clears throat> go ahead and peek out of the door. Try to get the Banshee's attention. And you're going to want to sit pretty much right in this spot. And you're going to go ahead and just spam shots from the Ghost to kill the Banshee. Be wary that the Banshee can fire a Fuel Rod at you that will one-shot you. And the sound effect for it is effectively inaudible at the distance that it will try to launch it. You're going to want to aim slightly ahead of where the Banshee is flying to. If possible. Right, once a once you see the ghost in the distance, you're going to want to aim slightly above where the grunt is sitting, and you can actually shoot them out of the ghost relatively easily. But once the elite gets in, just shoot the ghost. It will kill them as soon as it blows up. And that's just one less elite you have to worry about. If you're running low on ammo, head back to where you parked your old ghost. There are plenty of light rifles in this container. You can kind of peek around the corner with the camera there if you aim at the right angle. Alright, once the Banshee is down, you're going to want to go ahead and pull into the next area. You're going to want to drop your scatter shot for the Fuel Rod Cannon on the ground. We're going to use this to at least try to hit the Banshee once. Some, no, misclick. Some people would recommend trying to use the Banshee to take up the other Banshee in the air. However, due to the fact that the Carbine is obscenely effective against Banshees when used against you, I don't recommend that. Because there are at least three Elites up on that center platform that are all armed with Carbines. And they will drop everything in order to shoot you down. We're going to go ahead and spam the light rifle at the Banshee, try to get its attention. Once it gets within range, we're going to go ahead and try to tag it with a fuel rod. It will be easier said than done. There's unfortunately no plasma turret for us to use to shoot down that Banshee, so this is pretty much the only strategy I've been able to concoct that doesn't involve running around and then taking out all of the elites on the center platform, and then getting an Banshee to deal with the Banshee. It just, it's, I feel like it's easier to do it this way, even if it is a bit more patience trying. If you can get lucky, you might be able to tag the Banshee with more than one fuel rod. If you do, it'll go down just that much faster. But the Banshee AI in this game is incredibly obnoxious at dodging projectiles, so... If you're running low on ammo, you can go ahead and just restock right there.
All right, once the Banshee's down, we're going to go ahead and restock on light rifle ammo and push forward. You're going to want to head back for your scatter shot because it's the easiest way to deal with the Carbine Elites. Unfortunately, there are no light rifles in this tower, so we're gonna have to go ahead and wait till we get around to the next one. We're gonna go ahead and head up, and we're gonna take care of the elites with the carbines now. We're gonna go ahead and just pick up the other carbines so they don't despawn. Alright, so now we have a light rifle and a carbine. We're gonna go ahead and use the light rifle to strip shields, and then we're gonna use the carbine to go for headshots. You can throw a grenade here too with the, uh, to destroy the power core if, if you really want to. That allows you to kind of just skip to the next section. But we're going to go ahead and use the carbine here to go for headshots. Since we're going to want to conserve light rifle ammo. Since we're not going to have a lot available to us up until the next section. Now, some people recommend you go to the right path, as it is significantly easier. However, getting your hands on a binary rifle is usually more consistent going the left path. We're going to go ahead and just hang back here and try to take out as many of the enemies as we possibly can. The exception being that those turrets take pretty, pretty much no damage from the carbine, so it's better off just to spam light rifle shots.
Now, unfortunately, the Carbine does suffer a bit when it comes down to dealing with knights. For whatever reason, it has a very difficult time actually scoring headshots on them. Game design idea or potential headshot hitbox bug, I don't know. Alright, for this next section, don't shoot that elite up there. We're going to want to keep him alive, but the one down there, go ahead and shoot them. That elite, don't shoot him, leave him alive. He'll distract the Night Lancer with the binary rifle. There's a bit of a bug there where your shot will just collide with nothing, so you have to round the corner slightly more than you should have to. You want to go ahead and expel two shots from the binary rifle to deal with the Watchers. Alright, find the Lancer. Recommend around, like, six shots normally with the light rifle. And one headshot with the binary rifle will usually waste one of them. It can be a bit fickle sometimes. Once the Lancer's down, go ahead, restock on light rifle ammo. There's plenty of it, you won't run out. Next course of action is to locate a Needler. This will make dealing with the next section significantly easier. Go ahead, just juggle your binary rifle and your light rifle. We're going to go ahead and just juggle that into the next section. You're going to want to save that Needler for the final Night Lancer with the Binary Rifle. Same thing as earlier, spam shots with the Light Rifle, then use the Binary Rifle as a finisher if possible. If you're unlucky and they don't present their heads, then... When in doubt, just spam the light rifle. Normally, the Night Lancer tends to hang back a bit. Right, once those two battle wagons are down, pick up your Needler. Keep an eye out for which side the Lancer is on. And we're going to go ahead and try to use the Needler to kill them. Hopefully you're more lucky than I am and you don't have the most teleport happy Lancer on the face of the entire planet. I'm going to go ahead and just give a little piece of advice for the upcoming ghost run. When descending, you might need to let go of the boost button 
I find that on very rare occasions, if you hold the boost button the entire time, you'll just see some momentum. So when falling, let go of boost and try to make sure that the ghost is parallel with the floor to prevent yourself from losing all momentum. I'll go ahead and shut up. You can enjoy the rest of the run. See you next time. Brackets descend. Marking. Impact predicted 77.8 kilometers due north. We know where he's heading. Same place we are. 